and for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. My brethren, we're having a wonderful service today. Remember that, where two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus, he said, he is in the midst of them. So let's take advantage of his presence, of the teacher of all teachers, the Lord of all lords, of the one who has all authority in heaven and on earth, so we are able to open our hearts and let the word of God work in us. And when we leave this place today, we shall be fully blessed. We shall be full of God's power. God shall bless us all. And there is no way it could be any different. Our Lord, who has never failed to deliver on his promises, will most certainly work effectively. My brethren, Acts chapter 1, verse 11, and... Uh, it describes the moment when Jesus ascended to the heavens. The disciples were staring at Jesus ascending to the heaven, and all of a sudden two men in white apparel came up. They were the angels of God, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Listen carefully here. Jesus will come back eventually. If we're alive, we're going to be transformed, all of us. Uh, those who believe in Jesus and those who don't. Those who believe in Jesus, they will go into heaven, eternal happiness, and shall never leave there. They will be transformed. The flesh and blood shall not inherit eternal life, whether they perish forever or go to heaven. Therefore, God is going to create a body that can't be destroyed and that crosses through walls just like Jesus. Only God knows exactly how that works. We don't know for sure. The disciples were gathered together. The doors were closed. Jesus appeared before them. His body had been glorified by then. And all the sinners will be transformed, but they shall perish and shall never escape from there. They will be tormented for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. This sounds very serious. Eh... Uh, a thousand years times a thousand times a thousand times a million times a billion times a billion times that number times that number you take that number you don't even know what it's called that number times itself millions and millions of times and it's never going to end and Jesus will come the angel was very clear here the angels were very clear when they said this same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven and why is he coming? To judge people. Those who accepted Jesus as their Savior, who lived their lives according to the word, they will hear him say, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, my brethren. Those who didn't have that faith and refused to believe will hear him say, Depart, you cursed, into the everlasting fire. And if it's in the Bible, you can be sure that it's absolutely true. Hopefully everybody who is here is on the right hand of Jesus to hear him call them. Uh, if all men opened their eyes, all men would be saved, and there's room for everybody. I'm going to bless you now. God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now to bless all these people. I come before you, O oh Lord, to tell the enemy to take his hands off of their lives. Go away. Disappear now with all your pain and suffering. Oh, my sweet Lord, come down now and heal their stripes, the physical ones, emotional ones, and spiritual ones, their traumas. Oh, Lord, please lift these people up now. In the name of Jesus, blessed be your name for the glory of God. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord, my brethren. And now let's read a great message together. Let's start with the verse written by King David in, in 2 Samuel 22, verse number 33, which could be exactly what you're looking for today. And then we're going to turn to this week's message, which is really beautiful, from Psalm 119, verse 26. But now let's go to 2 Samuel 22, 33. God is my strength and power, and he makes my way perfect. Keep this word in mind, my brethren. Your way could be completely messy. God makes your way completely perfect, my brethren. And you should know this is all true, and God will do that for you. So now let's turn to Psalm 119, which we've already discussed. In Psalm 119, we're going to find a wonderful declaration written by who wrote this psalm. It's more of an explanation. So let's read it together. Psalm 119, verse 26. 
I have declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. I've been explaining this lately, so let's look at this. Jesus told us, when you are getting ready to pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Jesus said that. This happens in our physical room, but to tell the truth, we have another, another room, which is a space with God. When you feel like praying, that's an invitation God is making. Shut the door of your room, enter the presence of God, and only you can go in there. That place is a space he created for you. It's as if you were the only person on earth and he's paying full attention to you, undivided, looking inside of your heart. There you should declare all of your ways, the good ones, and thank God for he let you be used by him, and declare also the bad ones, and ask him to forgive you for what you did wrong, things you don't even remember, but the Holy Spirit will remind you, and you shall make amends with God. You shall prepare yourself so one day he can come to your house and there in that room, after you shut its door, you will leave behind everything you ever heard from any church, from any religion, from any person. Simply listen to what the Word of God tells you, which comes from the lips of God and His testimony is true. And in that instance, you open yourself and God comes and visits you and He does His perfect work and you are enhanced. But we've also seen here that Gehazi, a servant of the prophet Elisha, did just the opposite. The king of Syria sent the commander of his army, Naaman, who was a leper, to Elisha, who told him to go wash in the Jordan River. And then he washed in it seven times, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a child. And he decided to give a gift to the man of God. Prophet, I have gold, I have silver, I have all of this, and I'm giving this to you as a gift. I'll receive nothing. You're the one who needs a miracle. Take everything back with you. But Gehazi didn't like that. Perhaps he had some debts with some other people to settle. But if it didn't come from God, the prophet didn't want it. Sometimes the gifts of man get in the way. As they try to buy the prophet and favors from God, and they forget that they depend on God. But Gehazi tried to run after him, and they said, Commander, that man is running after you. And he stopped his chariots. He got out of his vehicle, his chariot, right? And he asked Gehazi, is all well? My master has sent me saying, two young men have come and they need this and this and this and this. Please take this. And he gave him many gifts. My servants will help you carry them. And he took them. And when he went home, he stored them away. And he came before Elisha. And Elisha said something to him. Second Kings chapter five. My brothers, this is very important. Elisha symbolized the presence of God there. Because when a man of God, when they are preaching, they are being used by our Lord God. And no one should try to deceive a man of God. Let's read what Elisha said in 2 Kings chapter 5. And this is what is written here. Let's read verses 25 through 27. Let's start here with verse 25. Now he went in and stood before his master. Elisha said to him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, Your servant did not go anywhere. That was already a lie. Then he said to him, Did not my heart go with you when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you? Is it time to receive money and to receive clothing, olive groves and vineyards, sheep and oxen, male and female servants? Therefore, the leprosy of Naaman shall cling to you and your descendants forever. And he went out from his presence leprous, as white as snow. He could have become white, clean, cleansed, purified, not white as snow, but cleansed from all of his sins, if only he had told the truth. God always has some space for us before him. We all may feel that urge from God and begin to pray. My brethren, in that instance, be careful about what you say. And above all, never lie to God, especially when you are praying. 
because even before your thoughts come into your mind, God knows what you're thinking. God knows it before you even say it, and it's useless to try and hide them. Our Lord searches the hearts of every man. He knows everything perfectly. And the man of God asked then, Where? Where did you go? I didn't go anywhere. Didn't my heart go with you, man? I saw that man coming out of his chariot. God showed that prophet everything, and you took things from that man. Do you know what's going to happen to you, Gehazi? You're going to be a leper, both you and your descendants. And at that moment, a family of lepers was born. My brethren, there are families whose lives are troubled because someone sinned and hid it. Judas Iscariot, he betrayed Jesus. He was ready to do that, and he had talked about it. And Jesus said, during, during the Last Supper, one of you will betray me. He should have said, it's me, Jesus. Please forgive me. No. And he betrayed Jesus. What am I getting at? To what the psalmist wrote, when you come before God, declare your ways. No matter how bad or ugly they may be, declare them. It is best to repent your sins immediately, but don't do it endlessly, or repent endlessly, but don't waste your time. You could have it any other way, it doesn't matter. Confess to God everything. Lord, I did it. If you have to make amends with someone, then do it, because if you owe someone when you die, you owe them forever, and then it's hopeless. God is inviting us to join him in communion and that communion is going to make a big difference in our lives because God's testimony shall never fail. Let's turn to Psalm 119, verse 130, and let's read together what's written in the Word of God. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So if I'm wrong, say, Lord, please help me understand your word because I want to understand it. I need to comprehend it because I need some light so I can understand my mistake and see what the enemy has been doing so he holds me in his hands forever. And then God is going to use the preacher. He is going to use you during the preaching. He's going to use someone who has no idea what's going on when you're praying and they will speak without knowing what they're saying, but you will know that God has spoken to you. God has given me an answer today. Once the Word of God is revealed to us, we know exactly what's going on. We say, Lord, I know I'm not okay. I feel this burden within me. It keeps me down. It makes me sad. It hurts me. I'm not happy, God. I might have a nice job, a good love life, a nice family, but Lord, something is missing. Please open up your Word to me. Perhaps you didn't quite understand what it is that you did wrong and the consequences it has in the spiritual universe, the chances it gives to evil spirits is immense. But once God opens up his word, once his word is revealed to your eyes, the entrance of your words, what does it say here? Gives light. It gives understanding. It gives understanding to the simple. So let's stay within the same psalm, verse 99 now, before this one then. Let's read what the psalmist wrote in this passage. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. Whatever God says to your heart, think about that. Even though you don't understand it clearly, think about it. In a little while, you're going to understand. And if you take it up, you're going to become the teacher of all teachers. And then, having declared all your ways will be worth it. And the next time that you do that, there won't be as many bad things for you to declare. But there will be many good things instead. God, thank you so much. After you have given me the wisdom, I now know more than my teachers. I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've done. But I'm a new creature now. You lifted me up. You made me stand up. And I'm going to be this happiness and this blessing that is going to bring a lot of joy to many people. My brethren, the entrance of the words of God gives light. And to think about the things God speaks directly to your heart will give you so much understanding that you will know more than your teachers. In other words, God doesn't want you to owe anybody. God is not here to make you small, to diminish you. God is here to open doors and to promote you, to turn you into a great blessing. 
Keep this word in your mind. Perhaps today you're going to shut the door of your room, you're going to pray in your house, and there are many negative things to tell, but in a little while, you're coming back. Well, God, I have many positive things to say. It's been worth it, God. I've been prosperous, I've been developing, and God will make you overcome in the name of Jesus. Let me pray now. God, thank you. Because, God, we're not saying negative things to threaten people. We're also declaring what's not good, my Lord, what needs to be cleansed so people can be lifted up. God, you want to promote each and every one of us to have more understanding than all the teachers they ever met in their lives. And Lord, this is an opportunity for all of us. Failing to go into the secret room, my Lord, to speak to you, to make amends with you, is the most stupid thing a person could ever do. And we want to make peace with you, my Lord God to be given inspiration and enlightenment. Oh, my Lord, to be given your holy guidance and to become a great blessing. God, I intercede for everyone. God, there are people who are now willing to know Jesus as they are known by our Lord. I want to know you, God. I want my salvation. I want everlasting happiness. Oh, Lord, please listen to what these people are saying now and help these people right now. I destroy all the evil powers that are affecting their lives and I deliver these people and I give an order right now and I say to the devil who's been using these people, I forbid you from doing that any longer. I cast you out and command you to go away in the name of Jesus. And you say, thank you, Jesus, and amen. Amen, brethren. Praise the Lord. There's a testimony from Porto Alegre I'd like to show you before we go to the real life drama. It's about a man who was healed. He was healed from a stroke. Please roll it in the name of Jesus now. Geraldo, what did God do for you? He healed me from a stroke that I suffered. How long ago? Two years ago. And what were the consequences caused by that? My left arm and my left leg. How high could you raise that arm before? Only this high. Only that high? Yes. Look at that. Raise your arms now. No, brethren, that's wonderful. You look touched at Aldo. <laughs> what was it like for you to walk at Aldo? I had a limp. Show us how you walked. Show us. Like that? Walk normally <laughs> now at Aldo. Hallelujah, Jesus. Look how wonderful that is. And now let's go to the real life drama segment because God wants to work in your lives today. Roll the real life drama video for today. I've worked all my life as a kitchen assistant but my arm and my back started to hurt. My left arm, this one. She would even cry in pain. Many times she had to go to the hospital because of her backache. The doctor gave her medication, but a few days later, the pain came back. Sometimes she would even walk with a hunched back because of the pain. I had tendonitis in my arms, and the doctor said I had a bone spur in my back, you know? I followed the treatment, and I started to take medication. It didn't help. As doctors seem to be useless in Jersey's case, she decides to turn to God for help. I have watched Dr. Suarez's show for many years. I watch his show every night. I go to sleep with the TV on because I'm always watching it. So I kept telling God that one day I would go to church, but I didn't want to go to church then because I was addicted to smoking. I drank beer, I went out to clubs, but I didn't want to go to church that way, doing these things. So I asked God to change me. Whenever I walked across some, some church, I heard them singing songs of praise. Those songs would touch me. When I came home, God, I want to go to church. I want to follow you. Cleanse me from these addictions, for they are not divine. I smoked a pack a day. I cut it down every day. I smoked less and less and grew sicker of smoking, you know, until one day I finally decided I'm not smoking anymore. That's all. And then I threw away the pack of cigarettes and I said, I'm not smoking anymore. I am going to follow Jesus the way he, he wants me to follow him and live. And the same thing that happened with drinking, I quit and I never drink again again after that. On October 24th in the afternoon, Jersey attends the service presided by Dr. Suarez in Curitiba. 
I should have gone many times before I planned to go, but something would come up and I didn't go. On October 24, I made a decision. I'm going to church today. My back hurt that day, my back and my arms. During the service, Dr. Suarez tells the attendees to accept Jesus. It's not a matter of luck or mere chance. God had heard Jersey's prayers. Later, when Pastor Fernando, the pastor here at the church, calls out to you who still don't belong to Jesus, you have to come up here to the altar and consecrate yourselves because today God is going to truly change your life. Next, Dr. Suarez prays for health problems. In that instant, Jersey feels the divine touch of God. I felt this intense heat, this burning sensation on my back. I felt as if my back and my arms were burning on fire. It turns out God healed my back and arms then. What's your name? My name is Jersey. What did God do? It's been over one year that I had this backache, Dr. Suarez, and also in this arm. I couldn't raise it or crouch. How high could you raise this arm? Only this high. Look, it would and hurt. Now? No, it doesn't so hurt So raise anymore. them up to heaven. And I want to accept Jesus. That's wonderful. She wants to accept Jesus. It's an everlasting union. Amen, Jesus. Praise the Lord. In that instance, she accepts Jesus and leaves church fully healed. I left church with no pain at all. I came here today to receive my blessing and I got it. I couldn't raise up my arms high, but now I can do it. I couldn't crouch down before, but now I can. My back doesn't hurt anymore. I used to feel this terrible backache, a lot of pain. It was horrible. I couldn't do household chores. Now I do everything. I wash my laundry. I couldn't do it before. I couldn't sleep at night. And now she really belongs to Jesus indeed. I don't feel like smoking anymore. I don't feel like drinking anymore. I don't feel like going out anymore. I just feel like going to church. I want to serve the Lord Jesus, just like my heart always told me I should serve him. My brethren, the happiest day of my life was when I was six years old. The first day I ever heard the gospel, the pastor asked us and I raised my hand and I was never the same. It's been 61 years now and I'm happy with Jesus. And I'm positive that this is the desire of every person who wants to be happy forever. Some people don't understand that. The enemy created this obstacle here and people see it as some kind of religion. Forget about religion. That won't take you anywhere. Following God can take you very far. Follow God. Religious conflicts will take you nowhere. Man creates doctrines here and there with many different purposes, some of which are deplorable. But once you hear the word of God, the testimony of God fills your heart. You know that that's the way that you should follow. Let's go to our question and answer segment. Dr. Suarez, is it wrong to say that only the blood of Jesus has authority? That depends, because the blood of Jesus has authority. You should never question that, ever. But Jesus didn't tell us to cast out demons with his blood, but in his name. And it's written in Revelation that those who overcome the devil overcome him by the word of their testimony and through the blood of the Lamb. Now his blood has the authority to cleanse us, to restore us, but demons are cast out in the name of Jesus. Question number two. Dr. Suarez, what happens when one ignores God's calling? Well, we lose it all. <laughs> a horse comes by with a saddle on, we watch it pass and walk. It's a dangerous road with many holes, the weather changes, there are animals everywhere. Anything can happen to us when we could have taken a, 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 a safe ride home, a protected pathway, and we could have had a safe life. My brethren, if you hear God's voice, listen to it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And now let's go to the Open Your Heart segment. Dr. Suarez, I go to church for two years now, and I've changed a lot after I became familiar with the Word. I was delivered from a few mundane things, such as alcohol. However, I'm involved with the sin of pornography. I believe that if God delivered me from nights out and drinking, I can also overcome this evil sin. I try to seriously respect the commandments of our Lord Jesus, and I feel sad to see that I still cannot succeed in this segment of my life. Dr. Suarez, what can I do so I can be delivered? The same thing that you did with the other things. You believed, but some people believe to a certain extent. So believe it completely. And as the psalmist wrote, go before the Lord and declare all of your ways. 
You have to tell God about everything that's wrong and why you do those things. Tell him you feel desire that you're weak and you can't resist it, but be sincere with God. If you say like, well, but God, I like it, but this is wrong, so cleanse me from that. And God will make you feel so much aversion to that that you won't even bear to remember it. It's kind of like passion. They say passion lasts about seven years. It starts, it goes through an enchantment period. The peak is around the fourth or fifth year. The minds of people are twisted. They don't know what they're doing. And then it starts to decrease. And when it's over, people actually feel embarrassed about it. My goodness, how could I have ever done that in my life? But you don't have to wait seven years. Jesus can deliver you today. This seven-year period is in human terms. It's for those who don't have faith in Christ. So go before God and open your heart to him. And you're not alone in this, no. This increasing publicity, these inappropriate soap operas and movies, they are making people go crazy. They see other people as objects. But once they find Jesus, their lives will be changed. Do that, my brethren, and declare all your ways to God, and he shall make you overcome. Let me pray now for those who are at home, and then we shall pray together. But this is for you too. God, we're gathered in prayer right now. I pray for all those who are crying. And there are so many people crying, God. There are so many people who are desperate. God, these people need to escape. They need a way out from all their suffering, from the persecution that they've been suffering, from the illness that's taking over their bodies or their minds, of passion, of temptation. God, please deliver these people. I'm going to use the authority of your name. In the name of Jesus, may all evil disappear and never come back. Amen and amen.